and welcome to the Soton Brain Hub video on aneurysms of the arterial circle. First off, let's talk about what aneurysms really are. An aneurysm is an abnormal bulging or dilation of an artery due to weakening of the vessel's wall. There are many things that can cause aneurysms, but the main risk factors are smoking, age, hypertension, and other cardiovascular risk factors that cause atheromas or vasculitis. Sometimes, things such as infection, trauma, or congenital disorders can also contribute to aneurysm formation. When the vessel wall is weakened, the pressure of the blood flowing through the arteries pushes its vessel wall outwards, causing the dilation. This is most common in arteries rather than veins due to the increased pressure of blood flow in the arterial versus the venous system. Aneurysms can occur in the aorta, the wall of the heart, or within the vasculature of the brain. The latter is what we will be focusing on today, and these are called cerebral aneurysms. The main types of cerebral aneurysms are saccular, fusiform, and microaneurysms. A saccular aneurysm is the most common type and is often referred to as a berry aneurysm. It is an outpouching on one side of the vessel wall, and it is the most likely to rupture. A fusiform aneurysm is a dilatation around the complete circumference of a vessel. A microaneurysm is an aneurysm of a small vessel, most often affecting the lenticulostriate arteries supplying the basal ganglia. In order to better understand cerebral aneurysms, let's have a look at the vasculature of the brain. As you can see in the image here, there is a circular pattern to the arterial supply of the cerebrum, and that is why the system of arteries is referred to as the circle of Willis. The circle of Willis is comprised of many different arteries. These are the left and right internal carotid arteries, the left and right anterior cerebral arteries, the anterior communicating artery, the left and right posterior communicating arteries, the left and right posterior cerebral arteries, and the tip of the basilar artery. One of the main clinical signs associated with cerebral aneurysms is cranial nerve palsies. This is because the vessels of the circle of Willis are in extreme proximity to the cranial nerves. Therefore, dilation of these arteries is very likely to cause a compression of a cranial nerve. A common example of this is seen in an aneurysm of the posterior communicating artery. As the posterior communicating artery lies right next to the oculomotor nerve, the third cranial nerve, aneurysms of this vessel have a direct impact on the structures innervated by cranial nerve 3. These structures include four of the six extraocular muscles, as well as parasympathetic fibers to the pupil. Therefore, an aneurysm of the posterior communicating artery will cause a complete ptosis, a fixed and dilated pupil, as well as paralysis of all the movements of the eye other than abduction and entorsion on downward gaze. An easy way to remember this is that a palsy of the third nerve results in an eye that is down and out. Within the oculomotor nerve itself, there is a special distribution of the fibers. Because the parasympathetic fibers travel most externally within the nerve, an aneurysm of the posterior communicating artery is going to affect the function of these fibers and therefore the innervation of the pupil first. Therefore, pupil signs will be apparent before the down and out position of the eye itself. An important neurosurgical emergency is the rupture of a cerebral aneurysm. As these bulges or dilatations of the arteries continue to contain blood that is flowing through them at high pressures and pressing against already weakened vessel walls, it is a possibility that the arterial wall may give way and break or rupture. In this case, the vessel will bleed into the cerebrum and cause the signs or symptoms of a stroke or transient ischemic attack. Some common areas of the circle of Willis where rupture may occur include at the anterior communicating artery, the internal carotid artery, as well as the middle cerebral artery and the tip of the basilar artery.
This is the video on aneurysms. I hope you found it useful and make sure to tune in next time. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel to help explain the mysteries of the brain.